Now, Russia has denied using cluster bombs in Syria after human rights organization Amnesty International suggested its airstrikes could constitute war crimes. The group has released a report saying at least 200 civilians have been killed in the past three months. It alleges Russian authorities lied to cover up civilian damage in at least two strikes. The group has also accused Russian and Syrian forces of using banned cluster bombs. But Russia says there's a lack of evidence in the amnesty report. To say that there's not enough evidence when we have provided um, photographs of impact sites, remnants of their weaponry. We have spoken to many witnesses, survivors of attacks. There are dozens and dozens of very credible video clips and other images of dead civilians, of, of bodies in parts and so on. Um, statements from the Ministry of Defense itself in Russia where they say that they've carried out attacks at particular sites or in the vicinity of them. I mean, it, it would be interesting to know from Russia what more evidence they would like because there's a ton of evidence at their doorstep that they have committed probable war crimes and they have not stood up to that at all. Al Jazeera's Peter Sharp is in Moscow and says that the Russian military rejected the report, saying it's full of lies and cliches. Well, so far, the defense ministry in Moscow have been reluctant uh, to comment on these very serious claims by Amnesty International that uh, more than 200 civilians were killed in the Russian uh, airstrikes. But today, they, they categorically denied the report. They said that, once again, there's nothing new in it, the same cliches the same fakes. It's nothing but a, a flood of lies, empty and without any proof. We familiarized ourselves with the contents of this report and as usual there is nothing concrete and nothing new published in it. In regards to the suggestion about the use of cluster bombs in Syria, the Russian Air Force does not use them. Uh, the Russian uh, Defense Ministry said that they were uh, unprecedentedly open about their operations uh, in Syria and they stated categorically that there were no munitions such as cluster bombs uh, on the air base uh, in the country. The purpose of all these manipulations, they said by Amnesty, is to, is to smear others. Al Jazeera's Rosalind Jordan joins us live now from Washington, D.C. And so we are seeing mounting pressure on Russia over its airstrikes in Syria. What have you been hearing from officials there in Washington? Well, the U.S. has not been pleased with the Russian air campaign inside Syria pretty much since it started earlier in the year. And that's because the U.S. is concerned, one, that uh, the Russians are trying to prop up President Bashar al-Assad instead of trying to find a constructive way to try to end the civil war. Even though the U.N. process seems to be uh, slowly getting underway. The other concern that the U.S. has had is that the uh, air campaign seems to be aimed at uh, those who are fighting the Assad government and not going after ISIL, which is the purpose of the U.S.-led coalition's air campaign inside Syria. And of course, as we have discussed before, Mariam, the U.S. is very concerned about there being uh, misread signals between those uh, who are flying alongside the U.S. and the Russians somehow getting each other's way and leading to some sort of inadvertent uh, confrontation over the uh, over Syrian territory. Now, the U.S. Uh, has said that if the Russians are serious about going after ISIL, they would very much welcome their participation, but they're still not seeing enough of a of, of a motive or a demonstration of intent from uh, the uh, Russian forces that they're actually committed to going after ISIL. Right, but Russia's planes not the only ones in the skies of Syria right now. There are concerns about civilian casualties as a result of U.S. coalition bombardment. That's right. The U.S. air war inside uh, Syria started in mid-September 2014. And there has been one investigation after uh, the coalition uh, forces went after Khorasan group targets in early November of 2014. In that report, the U.S. military found that even though they believed they were going after ISIL targets, that they did, in fact, kill two children who were in the area, as well as injuring two adults who were not affiliated with the Khorasan group or with ISIL. And so the U.S. military said that it was taking responsibility 
for that. There is one other uh, incident inside Iraq in the past year where the military uh, indicated that there were uh, civilian casualties and it's taken responsibility for that. However, they say that uh, they, when they get credible uh, evidence of allegations that they may have uh, injured or killed civilians, they say they will investigate. But as of right now, Mariam, we just have these two cases, one in Iraq and one in Syria. Thanks very much. Rosalind Jordan, live for us in Washington, D.C. Well, there is more to come for you on the news hour. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.